Wood. 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 Hello, I'm Bruce Holdley. I know everything about wood. I'm a real wood expert, and I would like to introduce you to the joys of wood identification. There are hundreds of different species of woods, but let's narrow it down to 13 species that you're likely to encounter here at work. Southern yellow pine, Douglas fir, hemlock, white pine, red oak, white oak, ash, chestnut, hickory, elm, maple, beech, and poplar. Southern yellow pine, dug fir, hemlock, and white pine are what we call softwoods. The rest are all hardwoods. Because coniferous trees appeared on earth millions of years before angiosperms, the anatomy of softwood is more primitive and simple than the anatomy of hardwood. This simplicity, however, means that there are fewer differences to distinguish one softwood species from another. So beware! And let's begin with the hardwoods, which are easier and more obvious to identify. We'll start with red oak. The first step is to get a good look at the end grain. The end grain shows the rings which form when a tree grows. Often you can identify a wood species by looking carefully at its growth rings. In hardwoods, each growth ring contains cellular structures called pores and rays. It is the appearance of these pores and rays and their arrangement within the growth ring which will enable you to quickly identify several species. Red oak, for instance, is easy to identify because its rays and rings of pores are so clearly visible. The rays in oak are larger and more pronounced than in any other species. They can be visible from several feet away. The pores are also quite large and can be seen running continuously around the edge of each growth ring. White oak looks very similar. The most notable difference is that whereas red oak's pores look deep and clear, white oak's pores are filled with cellulose. The cellulose prevents water from traveling easily through the pores. This is why white oak is much more rot resistant than red oak. It is also why Dave can't blow bubbles through this white oak, but he can blow bubbles through this red oak stick. And look, Dave can also blow bubbles through this piece of ash. That's because ash has rings of open pores very similar to red oak. The most notable difference between ash and red oak is that ash's ray lines are not visible to the naked eye. Let's recap. Ash has rings of open pores but no ray lines visible to the naked eye. Also, notice that between ash's rings of open pores, there are pores of much smaller diameter scattered randomly about. See? Now, chestnut looks similar to ash. It too has visible rings of open pores and no visible ray lines. The difference is the chestnut has little flame-like patterns of smaller pores between the rings instead of the random and evenly spaced smaller pores in ash. Now let's look at elm. It's my favorite. It's mine too. Oh! Hello there, God. Hello, Ash. I just wanted to say that when I was creating all the wood species of the world, I confess I got a little silly when I made Elm. Yeah, Elm is kind of silly. Like Oak and Ash, Elm has rings of pores, though not always quite as pronounced. But between these rings of open pores are little squiggly, wiggly, wavy patterns of smaller pores. See? Elm is unmistakable. Now, hickory also has a unique look to its end grain. Its most identifiable feature is the pattern of grid-like lines 
that are faintly visible between Hickory's thin rings of closed pores. This grid pattern can be detected with the naked eye, but it is striking when magnified and viewed through a hand lens. Let's move on to beech and maple. These two woods are notable because an examination of their end grain is not necessarily the easiest way to determine their species. Both beech and maple are diffuse porous woods. Diffuse porous woods do not have rings of easily visible pores, but rather numerous small pores that are spread evenly throughout the growth ring and are only visible with magnification. With the naked eye, the end grain seems smooth and solid. The best way to distinguish beech and maple is to make cuts on the surface perpendicular to the end grain and look for ray flex. Ray flex are formed when the ray lines which you see in the end grain are viewed on the wood's radial surface. In maple, these ray flex are numerous, short in length, and tightly spaced together. In beech, the ray flex are longer, less numerous, and further apart from one another. In these woods, especially beech, the ray flex are a sure indicator of species. Well, folks, I must stop and apologize. It's 10 o'clock on Thursday night, and I'm afraid I have neither the time nor energy to delve into the more challenging world of identifying softwood. Instead, my friend Josh will be explaining that science to you live and in person. But before I go, let me present to you the final species of hardwood on our list today. Poplar. And here to sing a song he himself wrote is the one and only Dave St. Denny. Well, we hardly ever sell that wood called poplar. Cause it's not cool like chestnut, oak, or dug fir. But it's very easy to ID. Just cut it and you'll see. It has mean green heartwood. Mean green heartwood. Literally green ass heartwood. And that's why I like my good friend Poplar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good night.